We got the hood up on the ram because today we'll be doing an install. We have beautiful blue skies today here in Georgia, so it makes for a pretty good day to do an install. Under normal circumstances, I would do this in my shop underneath my house. Unfortunately, the last time I had this truck in that shop, I didn't have my roof rack with everything on it, and I soon learned this morning that um, it no longer fits. Uh, I'm sure I can probably let the air out of the tires and get it in there, but uh, all the all the effort I put in this morning just getting my son's four-wheelers and stuff out of there I just felt it wasn't worth it and I could probably just do it right out here now It is pretty chilly and the wind is up a little bit But I got kind of this little nook down back on the back side of my house where the winds being blocked pretty good And uh, the Sun is right on us. So um, we're getting a little bit of warmth out of it So last weekend was my birthday and the wife surprised me with ARB twin air compressor this is something I've been looking at for a long time. Uh, my current air setup is a Vive Air, um, which it's light, it's portable, and it's, and it's very convenient. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have the output needed to get these 35s aired up in a timely manner. Um, this was definitely a surprise because it's been on my um, to-get list for some time. Let's take a second and let's dive into the box and see what it comes with. So what comes in the box is obviously the compressor, the manual, um, normally most installs, um, I don't use a manual, um, but this time I am going to use it, uh, it seems to be uh, a lot of connectors, so um, I'm sure it's pretty straightforward, but um, just to be safe, make sure we get this wired up con correctly, uh, I am going to look into this manual. We also have... Um, the main wiring harness, this is the, I guess, with the supply that comes off the battery. It looks like it's pretty much plug and play connected to the battery and it connects right to the compressor itself. It comes with a secondary harness. Now this harness, um, from what I gather, uh, it, it obviously um, will run the on off switch, but I believe all these additional connectors are for if you're running lockers front and rear. Um, so I, I, I believe that's what all the extras for in here. I'm not gonna need most of it, but um, we'll probably leave whatever's attached, attached, and just uh, clean it up and tuck it away to where I won't get any shorts or arcs or anything like that. And uh, finally, um, it comes with the uh, on off switch, which I will be using because um, the way I'm going to mount this, the actual bracket I was able to source has a place for this mount. I thought about running it through the S-Pod system I already got on the truck, but the leads on the um, main power wire here, they're a little large. Um, they're a much larger gauge than what uh, I usually uh, run into the S-Pod itself. Um, so with the way the bracket I got is set up, I'll be able to use this switch and uh, it'll be tucked away to the point where it can't be accidentally tripped or turned on. So that's a good thing. Now for the mounting bracket itself, I searched high and low for some form of mount. Now I thought about mounting it in the bed of the truck um, using some uh, rib nuts and mounting it permanently to the side. Um, there's a company out there and I can't think of it right off the top of my head that actually makes this, um, it's an aluminum molly webbing for the sides of the bed and the front of the bed. Um, I am gonna get some of that uh, to mount my high lift jack, jack up towards the front and a few other items, but um, 
I decided I wasn't going to permanently mount the air compressor back there because I do um, have stuff in the bed all the time and uh, once a year we take trips to Daytona and we actually use the truck because we keep all of our uh, beach stuff in the back and I drive down on the beach every day to set up awnings and stuff um, so we can enjoy the day in Daytona and I don't want to have that compressor sitting there in the back getting beat on and um, just uh, getting damaged. Uh, also I didn't really want to run the wires outside of the truck into the bed and um, drilling other holes or anything like that. So I searched online and I found this company called Desert Dozen and they make a bracket and this bracket um, obviously you mount the twin air compressor to it. It actually mounts under your passenger seat. So in the Rams, that's where you store your bottle jack and all your, uh, the, the, the breaker bar for the lug nuts and everything else. Well, all that will have to be removed, removed, but this mount will mount underneath that seat, um, permanently fixing my ARB just under the seat. Um, and you're going to get to see that install today. Uh, I'm going to try to do it as much detail as I can, but disclaimer here, um, I'm not saying anything I do in this video is how you should do it. This is how I'm going to do it. And, um, you know, I'm open to suggestions. If, if somebody sees something that, uh, the way I did something ran wire, etc., please drop a comment and, and, and give me, give me your thoughts. Um, uh, I can take any of this back out and rerun everything, but, um, let's get into this box. So, um, just like the um, compressor, there's a set of directions. Um, I, it appears that it can mount both in a 1500 as well as the HD, the 25 and 3500. So we got the directions and um, everybody likes pictures. So um, it definitely has pictures and uh, kind of a step-by-step -step on the bolts and how to mount that kind of thing. Comes with a couple other uh, washers and mounting bolts. We'll see what those go to uh, once we start the install. Swedish fish. Um, you know, I, I appreciate it when people put candies and stuff in there, but they ain't no telling how long that's been in that dang box. Everybody likes a sticker. And for the bracket itself, we'll get that box out of the way. Here is, here is the mountain bracket. Again, this is gonna slide up under the passenger seat. The twin compressor will mount to this. This side will be facing the side that if you're a Ram owner, you know they have a, um, a decorative piece of covering so you, it kind of hides the jack so when you open the door you just don't see a jack there. Um, I believe you can actually still put that piece back on if you want to. It just depends on how far out you locate your um, connection for your, your airline. But um, if not, this isn't bad to look at either when you open the door. You're going to have uh, your air fit in here, and then right here is actually where your on-off switch will go. So it's a pretty cool design. It seems like it's um, pretty sturdy. Um, it feels like, it's, I, think it's a, I think this is aluminum. Um, I can't really tell with that powder coat, but I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. But it feels very, very sturdy. And um, no, this is, I think this is going to be a pretty clean look once it's in. In the truck for the mounting system, um, this is the cover I was talking about, kind of a beauty cover. Um, I guess some of your tradesman models or the, the service truck models may not actually have this, but uh, mine is a Laramie, and most of the ones I've seen, um, I have seen this, but this is just kind of a beauty cover. It kind of just hides your uh, bottle jack and everything up underneath your seat. Ooh, looks like I'm gonna have to vacuum that out before I put that in, but we're gonna be removing all this here and um, the compressor and the mount will actually go up under this seat and that uh, that out the outer frame of the of the bracket will go right here like I said it's gonna have a pretty decent look to it um, and the switch will be here and then the air fitting will be right about here but I believe you can actually still put the cover back on you got quite a bit of room on the inside from where it kind of bows out uh, we'll see but it's not the end of the world if it doesn't um, it's gonna look cool either way so um, let's get started on mounting that thing to the to the bracket itself so if you're attempting to do this install or maybe something very similar there's a couple extra pieces you're actually going to need now there is a possibility that they do sell some of this in a bundle um, I didn't uh, Amanda didn't get me a bundle so 
um, I had to get a few extra pieces so this would actually work. I mean, I could have mounted the compressor and uh, wired it all up, but it would not be able to be used unless I do have the air connection fitting um, and the other pieces of plumbing needed to actually plumb that air fitting. Uh, I can tell you that Desert does it, does sell a uh, kit. So when you buy the mount, they actually sell a lot of these pieces extra as part of a, a, a bundle or, or, or package deal. Um, I felt it was kind of pricey and a lot of what they were um, offering in that kit. I mean, no knock on Desert does it. Um, just from just from the product view, just looking at the product they sell it looks like pretty high quality but unfortunately the extra pieces that they offered it was um it seemed like it was like 30 or 39 dollars extra and it looked like stuff that uh, you could pick up off the shelf at lowe's um so i i did want to make sure that i actually had the arb um air fit and i really don't know if this matters or not um but this uh, this is a lot smaller um in uh length like you would find if you just picked up one on the shelf at lowe's um, but what I have here to complete this install is obviously the air connection fitting we're going to need to connect our air hose. An NA fitting for, uh, I think this is negative four NA fitting um, female to, oh, excuse me, it's an NA fitting N4 or negative four male to a one fourth threaded female. So I can connect that to this. Six inches of uh, braided uh, air line. I think this is actually a brake line, but it should be able to withhold the uh, actual air pressures. And it also has the NA fittings on the end, so I can connect it to this piece and then connect to this. Then I also got a 90 that is threaded in one fourth with a um, NA fitting on it as well. And the reason you're gonna need this is it's going to connect on top of the compressor here. And then we'll run our line and to the plate this will be on the back side of the plate and this will be on the front side of the plate so when it's all connected this air fitting will be right here and then obviously the lines will run on top of the compressor Now I decided to um, end up going with some of the AN fittings only because you don't have to add the additional uh, thread tape. Um, we're gonna see how well it works. I'm gonna do my best to check it to make sure it's not leaking. And if there's any leaks, then um, maybe we'll just switch over to one fourth fittings altogether. But I wanted to keep something real clean and real tight. So I kind of went with my own design, own design here. So we're gonna see. Um, I'm gonna see how it does. amazing all the crap you find up under your seats even when you think you get it all cleaned out you find more brand new pack of gum well now that we got everything out um i'm gonna clean up some of that mess under there get some of that stuff i haven't been able to vacuum um but before we go and slide the bracket and the compressor in i am gonna route my wires so if you're going to be purchasing one of these ARB twin compressors, something you may want to take into consideration is they only supply you with six foot lead of power wire. Now on the diesel, I have two batteries. I have what I'm going to call a house battery and then um, the starter battery. Originally, I wanted to, uh, 
attach the power line to my actual starter battery. The only thing outside the starter I have attached is going to be my winch lines. I don't utilize this battery much for any type of utilities outside of just um, the, it being the starter. But um, with all the connections I already got on the house battery, I didn't want to add another connection. And being that I'm not running the twin compressor on my S-Pod system, um, only because the gauge of wire is a little bit larger than what I use on the S-Pod, I wanted to use it on the opposite side battery on the passenger side. The problem I'm running into is there's no good place on the passenger side, if, if you're a diesel owner, um, to have access through the firewall. You've got all your coolant stuff over here. You've got all your climate controls and everything on this side. And even on the inside of the cab, you got all that just underneath the um, dashboard. So it makes it really difficult to find an area to be able to um, run it through the firewall. So I am going to have to use the driver's side. Now, if you are familiar with the Ram 2500, there is an access plate on an automatic. If you have a manual, that's where all the um, that's where all your clutch and everything comes through the firewall. But on the automatics, so like on emergency vehicles and stuff like that, there is an access plate, um, which I'm already currently using for some of my um, some of the utilities I already got wired up. Um, it is right there. So I am going to have to take that plate out and run my wire through. The problem is, though, is it's the, the wiring harness is not going to be long enough to make it to the battery, so I am going to have to extend the wiring harness. Uh, my plan is to bring it down inside the cab. Um, uh, the last set I actually have underneath my center console here, I, I actually ran a whole new wiring harness down here where I have two auxiliary plugs. Um, for different things, they do run off my S-Pod. When I was keeping my ARB fridge inside the truck, I had it actually tied in down here to one of those auxiliary plugs I have in the bottom. Um, I'm going to run that wiring harness through the firewall. I'll bring it down through the kick panel, up through the carpet. I have a slit already underneath the carpet where it will come out. The problem I'm running into is crossing the wire over this hump. I really didn't want to get into taking my seats out, but what I'm running into is this is a Laramie. And on the Laramie, it has rear climate. Um, and the ductwork passes underneath that center console. So it's making it really difficult to um, figure out a way to fish that wire under there because all that's kind of underneath. I'm sure on uh, on uh, one of the tradesmen's or, or something like that, you don't have all this extra stuff in there and you can fish the wire right across. So that is a problem I'm running into, but um, we're going to get this wire fished through. So I had to come in the garage and get out of some of that wind. Although the sun's out, that wind is blowing pretty strong and it keeps a chill in the air. And then I had to look at this um, installation manual on some of the wiring harness here. So as I mentioned, um, this kit is designed to run front and rear lockers as well as to be used as an air compressor. Um, so I got all these extra plugs on here. I had to determine which each switch was for. And then there's this one known as the isolation switch, which I have found out from reading. This is actually the switch to turn it on and use it if you're going to be using it as a compressor. So we got our switch wired up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start connecting the rest. All right. On this switch, um, as I've mentioned a couple times, you have options to run uh, the front and rear lockers. Um, that's what all these extra wires are for. They are for the additional switches to do that. Um, there's also the plugs for the solenoids for that. Um, the, now, the main harness that will plug in for the switches has all that associated with it. And I just need to run one switch, which is the isolation switch to actually turn the compressor on. I didn't, I thought it was gonna be self-contained to where the power that this, the main harness runs to this will actually supply the switch power, um, but I was wrong. I do got to wire it to some form of uh, 12 volt power, whether that's ignition or what have you. Um, the good thing is, um, as I was mentioning, is I do have um, additional auxiliary switches that are auxiliary ports that I mounted underneath my console for when I was running my ARB fridge and stuff that connect directly to my S pod. So, what I've done here is I took the illumination wire as well as that ignition or power wire and I went ahead and wired them together. So I've used this style connector. I don't know what you would call it, um, but you have a male in and then you have a female in. So I got some extra lead wire right here that I'm going to run up under my carpet and into the bottom part of my console and tap it right into that auxiliary plug I have in there. But um, this is the female end of that. And as you can see, I can just 
connect them together and then if I got to remove this out for any reason um, for servicing or cleaning or, or what have you maybe I just take it out um, I can simply take it apart and everything else unplugs uh, I did get some extra wire loom so I'm going to cover all these wires when I put it in I like to keep everything pretty clean I don't want uh, any wires showing or anything like that but uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin running the wires and um, get all these extra wires put in and cleaned up and attached somewhere close to the compressor so they're not all floating around underneath my seat. What I've got done, here is the um, main plug for the compressor. This is what will run to the batteries. I do still got to extend that lead, um, but it is through. And then here is the new plug. This is going to be the plug that um, sends the um, ignition signal or power signal to the switch. The way I have this set up, I mentioned earlier that um, I already had a wiring harness I had created that went into my center console. So this is the harness that went into the center console. This is my Wii Boost. This is my cellular data antenna. It runs off my um, uh, S-Pod as well. I had an, an extra auxiliary power I put in here where I was running my ARB fridge for a while. I still have power to that connection. So what I did is I drilled a hole here and uh, fed the new line down through there and spliced into this. So this will no longer be active. Uh, I'm not going to pull it out, but um, this will take the spot for this auxiliary power. And the way my S-Pod will work is when I turn it on, um, I think it's switch 5. I haven't, um, I don't have it named yet like I do all my other lights and comms and Wii Boost and such. Um, switch 6 are my, my AEV uh, fog lights on the front. I got to rename it, but switch 5 will now be for the compressor and I'll get that renamed and stuff on there so basically all I have to do is hit the button it then activates um, once it's active it's basically armed it I can then go over there and throw the switch on the compressor and it'll work turn the switch off when you're done and this uh, the way the S pod works is if for any reason I leave any of this stuff on longer than six hours it will automatically if it detects power draw um, deactivate and turn it off but I think after six hours of no type of draw or use it cuts them off anyway so um, that's how I'm gonna run it so it is mounted up under the passenger seat the mount is pretty tight it ain't moving and it ain't going anywhere um, I'm sure it will rattle a little bit but uh, there's probably gonna be all kinds of stuff rattling when that uh, compressor cuts on but as you can see, I got my own off switch right here, and I have my airport right here to connect my airline to air up all my tires. I think it's a pretty clean installation. Um, I was able to tuck the wires back pretty nicely in there. Um, they're out of the way. The seat clears it good. The seat still goes back and forward, um, so I don't see any issues. Well, once we once we use it, we'll see if there's any heat concern. I don't believe there's going to be any. The air filters are. Um, pretty much open in there and the fans have enough room to suck air in so I think we're going to be good but uh, there you go there's my install of the ARB twin air compressor on the Desert Desert Ram 2500 mount uh -huh. 